The great white shark has been the subject of international scrutiny since 2010, ever since their population started dropping in previously densely populated areas. We will attempt to uncover where the great whites have gone, why they're dwindling in number, and how big they truly are, since this answer has eluded many a marine biologist for years. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at the mystery of the great white shark. What is the Great White Shark Café? After years of arduous studies and painstaking research, a remote coastal area between Hawaii and Baja, California, not previously suspected as a shark habitat, has controversially been revealed to be a highly popular congregational spot for a mass of great white sharks. Known as the White Shark Café, this meeting ground is situated in the Pacific Ocean and is said to play host to a vast group of great whites every year. The café gained its unofficial name in 2002 from researchers at Stanford University's Hopkins Marine Station, who were studying the great white species with satellite tracking tags at the time. During their studies, the researchers tagged four sharks off the coast of central California. All kinds of great whites have been tracked traveling from the coast of California to the café, males, females and juveniles together, all thought to have originally come from a diverse length of rookeries along the North American coast. These sharks went on to travel to the cafe during a six-month period, and what they did there is peculiar, to say the least. Tracking tags attached to the sharks' fins showed that on the journey to the cafe, the sharks traveled across the ocean's midwater zone, making slow, periodic dives to around 3,000 feet to feed on prey such as squid and small fish that inhabited the deep waters due to their sensitivity to light. However, once they arrived, their behavior changed. The male sharks would bop up and down at the water's surface as many as 120 times per day and to a depth reaching all the way down to 1,500 feet. Meanwhile, the adult females typically dove deeper and usually dove only during the day. At night, the mothers would stay with their juvenile pups. As previously mentioned above, prior to the 2002 research, this mid-Pacific Ocean area wasn't considered an ideal shark habitat, and the question of why the sharks would travel there puzzled many researchers for years. This is because it was once believed that the area had little to no food for sea mammals. Researchers once even described it as the shark equivalent of a desert. A few theories regarding the reason for this migration were investigated at the time, including the hypothesis that it could be an ideal birthing ground for the sharks. However, this was found to be the least likely answer, due to the vast distance between the cafe and any coastal nurseries. Fortunately, recent research in early 2018 by the research vessel Falcor showed that there was a rich and diverse food chain beneath the sea that was just too deep to be detected by satellites. With this newfound data, it made sense that the Great Whites would travel there for food. Nonetheless, even with all this data from Stanford University and the Falcor vessel, there are still many questions left unanswered. For example, why don't the female sharks display the same diving behaviours as their male counterparts? Why do the sharks linger there for so long? And what does this mid-Pacific Ocean Cafe offer that other waters don't? Where have South Africa's great whites gone? From 2010 to 2016, some of the world's most famous great white sharks were known to congregate in several areas across the South African coast. This included the densely populated sites in False Bay and Gansby, where an estimated population of 900 of the great whites were commonly sighted. However, since 2017, researchers and cage diving operators studying the sharks in this area noticed a sudden, sharp decline in the numbers of sharks spotted. It is unclear how many white sharks there are supposed to be around South Africa. Estimates range from around 500 right up to a 901 population alone. When the sharks were most active in False Bay in 2010 to 2016, there were sightings averaging 205 times per year. However, in 2018, that number took a giant hit, plummeting right down to 50 sightings in that year. And in 2019, the number dropped to no sightings at all. The most recent white shark sighting occurred in January 2020 in False Bay, over a year after the last sighting. For those few years between 2016 and 2020, 
Researchers were baffled as to why the sharks had suddenly disappeared. Alison Cock, a marine biologist for South African National Parks, has studied the white sharks in South Africa since 1998, and she says there is no singular theory for why the sharks have disappeared. However, she claims there are a handful of possible reasons, each one contributing in its own ways, such as local fishing activity which targets species of sea creatures that juvenile shark pups tend to feed on, a decline in breeder sharks within the population and the predation of sharks by orcas present in the area. To begin with, media coverage of the South African Great Whites indicates that demersal shark longline fisheries are the central culprit for the decline. These fisheries target and capture the important smaller shark breeds that juvenile white sharks tend to feed on, which directly impacts the shark's mortality rate. For every single smaller shark that's caught and killed in these areas, there's one less for each white shark pup to feed on and gain nutrients from. Without these, the sharks just waste away. Furthermore, fisheries in and around the KwaZulu-Natal province use shark nets and drumlines, baited hooks specifically targeting sharks to cull the white sharks to prevent them swimming too close to the shore. From 2013 to 2017, on average, 17 great whites died on these drumlines each year. This supports the theory that demersal longline fishing in the area had a direct impact on the drop in the great white population. However, the problem with this theory is that scientists from South Africa's Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries have indicated that there is a lack of data to support it. These scientists say that they can only recommend catch control based on data, but there are no limits in place, and there are ample concerns about the notoriously weak monitoring of the South African coastlines. PhD student Dylan Irian also has some interesting findings. While sightings in the Western Cape have dropped, those in the Eastern Cape have jumped right up, indicating that the sharks may have simply moved, despite the fact that there's still longline shark fishing there. Furthermore, the data being used to fuel this research is relatively new, being that recorded observations in False Bay only began in 1996. It's also important to note that the larger white sharks spend a lot of time far offshore, and the satellite tags used to track the sharks are extremely expensive, which means there's so much movement and data that we never even get to see. To conclude, with all of this information and data that we can't see, we cannot possibly know if the fishing of smaller prey sharks is the primary cause of the decline. Another cause of the decline could be attributed to the decline in breeders within the South African white shark population. Sarah Andriotti, a student at Stellenbosch University, studies the genetics of white sharks around the South African coast, in a two-year study from 2009 to 2011, Sara estimated that there were only 300 breeders in a single white shark population where the minimum is supposed to be 500 to prevent inbreeding. This low breed account suggests that the male sharks within the population are dying out, either through health difficulties or culling by the local fisheries. This then means that the mature female sharks wouldn't have been able to breed as highly, which could be an explanation for the dwindling shark count. However, there isn't much data to support this, so it's hard to know if this had a significant impact in the difference in sighting counts. The final theory, and the most plausible and supported of the bunch, is the recent spike in orca presence along the South African coast. Orcas are known for preying on seabirds, octopuses, sea turtles, rays, fish, and sharks. They're also known for being highly aggressive, especially if they're of the transient type, traveling in pods, acting like wolf packs in order to hunt marine mammals. Furthermore, orcas are the most widely distributed mammals, living in most oceans and seas surrounding coastal countries. However, they prefer to cruise the waters at higher latitudes and quite near to the shore. Since 2015, an increasing number of orcas have been spotted in and around the South African coast. To begin with, Two orcas nicknamed Port and Starboard respectively were first spotted in False Bay in 2015. Around the same time, the carcasses of a group of broad-nosed seven-gill sharks were found in False Bay. The teeth impressions from the wounds indicated that the culprit appeared to be an orca. Two years later in 2017, five white shark carcasses washed up on the shores of Gansby, with their livers removed, and with teeth marks of orcas. At the same time, Alison Koch published a paper on the first documentation of a novel feeding technique, 
which explained how the orcas used force to break the shark's pectoral girdle, thus enabling them to bite out the liver and discard the rest of the carcass. As a result of this newfound information, Koch theorized that the disappearance of the sharks from False Bay and Gansby was due to the growing orca presence in the area. Koch's theory is further supported by several other orca sightings that were documented at the time. For example, Salvador Jorgensen tagged 17 white sharks off the coast of the Farallon Islands, and they all disappeared. In his studies of the sharks, he found that the white shark can disappear for up to a year during the time that orcas pass through the area. This could be an explanation of the white shark migration to the Great White Shark Cafe between Hawaii and Baja, California. Meanwhile, this natural migration as a result of the orcas could also be an explanation for their disappearance from False Bay, Gansby, and other South African coasts. However, this might be a misinformed argument that's based on the data from two outliers, Port and Starboard. Due to the shark's evasive migration, there was an increase in white shark sightings further along the coast in Mossel Bay. At the end of 2019, Cox studied the orcas that passed through Mossel Bay at the time and found that orca pods had come into an aggregation site with no change in white shark sightings. These orcas didn't include the two orcas known as Port and Starboard, which indicated that these were the only two orcas responsible for the deaths of the white sharks recorded. Nonetheless, at the end of 2019, a video surfaced that shows an orca being interested in one particular white shark in a group. Later data shows that that same shark population dropped from 10 white sharks down to nothing overnight. Therefore, it's hard to say whether multiple orcas are the cause of these deaths, or if it's just those two. Either way, we can say with some level of certainty that increased orca presence in the False Bay and Gansby coastal areas directly impacted the number of white sharks that were around at the time. What is the true size of a great white shark? Great white sharks have long been considered one of the most fearsome extant macro predators in the open ocean, both for their many rows of terrifying razor-sharp teeth and for their overbearing size and mass. However, while it's a universal certainty that they're larger than most other macro predatory fish, their exact size has long since been the topic of widespread debate and uncertainty for many scientists across the globe. The great white shark is one of many sea mammals in which sexual dimorphism is inherently present. In other words, the female great whites tend to be larger in size and mass than their male counterparts. At birth, grey whites are recorded as measuring up to 1.2 meters and grow 25 centimeters every year. The majority of verified great white shark sightings on record indicate that, on average, adult male great whites can measure between 3.4 and 4 meters and weigh between 522 and 771 kilograms. Meanwhile, female great whites measure between 4.6 to 4.9 meters and have an average mass of 680 to 1100 kilograms. Somewhat contradictory to this, there have been numerous sightings of larger female sharks over the years, some of them unverified while others were verified. According to J.E. Randall, the largest white shark reliably measured was found in Ledge Point, Western Australia, in 1987, and is said to have measured at least 6 metres. Around a decade later, in 1998, the Canadian Shark Research Centre captured and verified a female shark of a similar size off the coast of Alberta, Prince Edward Island, measuring 6.1 metres. Furthermore, a white shark captured off the coast of Malta in 1987 is said to have measured an estimated 7.13 metres by John Abela. Photographic evidence of the shark dubbed Malta was thoroughly examined and was found to confirm this estimation, even suggesting that it was larger than what it was first thought. This suggests that great whites can grow up to at least 7 metres, a vast jump from the previous known size of 4.9 to 6.1 metres. Alternatively, the largest unconfirmed sighting of the great white shark has to be the case of the shark that was found trapped in a herring weir in New Brunswick, Canada during the 1930s. Records from the time indicate that this shark appeared to measure at least 11.3 metres and weighed well over 3,000 kilograms. 
Some argue that these measurements were not obtained in a rigorous, scientifically valid manner, suggesting that they may not be accurate at all. Later studies of the shark in question found that it may have actually been a basking shark rather than a great white, a common misidentification due in part to their similar body shapes. Fundamentally, all that this data and anecdotal evidence can tell us is that there is no clear-cut, consistent information to say how large great white sharks can really grow. Recorded and verified great white shark sightings indicate that the limit is 6.1 meters, but unconfirmed accounts say that they can grow way beyond. But what do you make of these great white shark mysteries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.